Trying to decide whether that new game is worth your $60? Or maybe you're just wondering if an old game is worth your time. Well, you came to the right place. This is the only podcast that tries to answer the question. Should I buy it, though? Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Should I Buy It, Though? Uh, I am Tin Daddy John Carlo Herrera here with you this week. Um, subject Nick. It's your boy T. Barry. I'm Amanda Facosta. And I'm subject Nick number two. <laughs> Get back here, Kate. <laughs> and oh, this week we have got uh, a rousing episode for you guys. The uh, the Hello? hotly contested sequel to 2007's hit Bioshock. We are reviewing Bioshock Two in episode two of our Bioshock week. Oh, more Bioshock? <laughs> There's more to this collection? <laughs> Can I just say, I am actually so supremely excited to talk about this game. I'm Me too. Both because of my thoughts, but I'm also just curious to see what you all think and where it lands in the Bioshock experience for all of you. Because I see so many polarizing opinions all over the internet on it where... People trash on it for being the worst Bioshock game, but then other people are like, no, no, it's my favorite. So I'm just so curious to see. It is the worst, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game at all. It's Whoa. it's amazing, yeah, but it's out of the three, like it's the, the worst. It's kind of like the Dark Souls 2 thing. I was saying this earlier. Like In that series, Dark Souls 2 is considered the worst, but it's still like a solid game, you know? It's kind of so. like your favorite burger joint. Like the burgers aren't great, but it's nostalgic. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a hot take. Okay, I'm still not fully sure because I need to finish Infinite and the DLC. But at the moment, it's my favorite. Ooh, the casuals paradise. Far far the and away. The casuals paradise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The combat is very easy and made it made a lot easier with all the extra upgrades they have provided yeah. you. Like mm, I think Infinite is the easy it on normal difficulty, so far Infinite has been the easiest. But hmm. two is my favorite. Like the combat feels the best. On hard yeah. difficulty, the Bioshock two is by far, for me at least, the the easiest because they tank you up with those upgrades. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like I know um when I, I know, uh, Amanda, when you were playing one and I was telling you to hack that health station, it's like, it should drop you a, a first aid kit. I totally forgot that was only a Bioshock 2 thing where when you hack stuff, the machines will give you a free yeah, item. Yeah, I noticed that after the fact and I was like, well, why did I just... But there's also, <laughs> um, there's also like an upgrade you can get that does that. It heals you when you hack. Mm, no, I mean, I mean um, the one... Where, like, you get extra... Yeah, you ammo. can get two of the same yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever With you've the, crafted. Like, would... But this, in two, if it's a vending machine, it'll be a random item from the vending machine. If it's yeah. the health so, like, station, just... it'll drop you a health kit yeah i only got the bonus in this game once because possibly my biggest complaint with this game is that they removed my favorite feature from bioshock one the hacking and replaced <laughs> it with a garbage quick time event that i hated <laughs> and it's only gonna get worse because they won't even have a hacking mini game in the next I, infinite yeah. i almost because because i started oh. doing uh my replay of infinite today on stream um i almost prefer not having the hack because literally in in two i would just buy out the machines because i was always rich and i would just buy them out because i was like absolutely not i i just it would frustrate me (laughs) no i liked it i had a ton of money too but i was greedy and always wanted to get in the little blue area so i will say i liked the hacking because it was also like in real time so the pressure was like on you know what i mean yeah that's good and bad that can be frustrating but it's it's good from like a world design but i hated it from like it because it was just frustrating because i didn't like the game yeah it's not to your advantage yeah yeah Yeah. but i also i don't know it made more sense to me because in the first game it paused everything and i'm like oh did you guys just forget about me hang on while i like change these pipes (laughs) just give me a second (laughs) go kneel down yeah i do look i do hate it when you're like hacking a turret and you shock the turret so it's like stunned for a second, but then you're still hacking it, so then it's just like directly shooting you in God, the face. And that there's was the worst. nothing you can do until you get it. But I also I also love it. I'm just um, I did like the, the weapon dart too gun. is good. The, the the hacking dart. 
Yeah, that was a cool mechanic. I'm so glad yeah. we're opening talking about hacking because we overlooked it in the first game and it was my <laughs> favorite mechanic. Time. Yeah, I'm curious, did anyone try? Because I know in the first one, if you freeze a turret, um, the the liquid actually slows down. So I'm wondering if you freeze before hacking in this game, does it slow the needle? Down? I think oh. it still works, but I can't confirm because honestly, I use shock 90% of the time. Me too. And I got the upgrades for the slowdown, so it really wouldn't have mattered too much also same okay um i don't think we need to do a recap on our experiences with this game because i think we covered that in the last episode basically benetados and barry have played them uh way back when for the rest of us this is our first time playing the game i guess Um, the only thing is this was nick's first game right first bioshock game uh i i didn't play this one first but i i was exposed to this one exposed to it first okay Gotcha. This to the whole world of Bioshock. This was my introduction. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an interesting one to talk about. I feel like uh, as far as trying to structure the episode because it's so, it is so directly a sequel to the original Bioshock that like if we if we really were to di- di- devote the exact same amount of time to everything. It would, like, we'd just be repeating a lot of what we said with slight tweaks and changes. So, I'm, I guess my big overall take on this game, uh, not touching on, like, narrative and overall experience, but mechanically, is that it feels like a refinement of the original Bioshock. It feels like they added lots of quality of life changes. They did little, you know, like, a, we mentioned it last time, but, like, giving you the code to, to a pin pad if you've already discovered it. It's there if you need it. Uh, stuff like combat feels a little more refined and balanced, if not maybe a little too easy. I I will definitely concede that, especially towards the later sections of the game. But it it builds on the original Bioshock. Is that does that feel like a fair assessment? How how did mechanically it feel to you guys? Um, uh, go ahead, Amanda. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Nick. I went ahead last time. You can go ahead. <laughs> Why? Thank you. Um, no, yeah. Th- I think everything was a pretty much a refinement of the first game even from the opening sections it felt better the only thing Mm -hmm. that seemed like a detraction was the speed of your character but there was a story reason for that i I guess i could just go ahead and say from a scale of one to pure elation how happy were you to find out you were a big daddy at the beginning of the game It's Wasn't that your so favorite cool. part of the last game? Too? Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Okay, it's because, just pure joy. <laughs> here's the thing. I like I like I mentioned in in our first review. Um, the only thing I I knew about the game besides like uh something regarding the little sisters is something regarding the big daddies. Like I knew they existed, and I knew I had heard at some point something about you like being a big daddy the whole time or something like that so that's why in bioshock one when we start becoming the big daddy i was like oh i guess this is it so then when bioshock 2 opened and i found out that i was a big daddy (laughs) oh man and i gotta say i it's just me carrying over the same notes from uh from last episode (laughs) but my love for the little sisters only got stronger and stronger and stronger as it went. I will say the mechanic is like it can it can be tiresome, but I love them little babies. They my babies. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> and like wow. this one too, like it makes it a little harder to be like mean to them because yeah. you literally there's just like harvest or adopt, and you're just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And they exactly. call you daddy. Yeah. It's like, I can't harvest you. Yeah, Come on. Like, He's like, I'm daddy. I have to adapt. Did you try harvesting any of them? Hell no. no. Oh, I felt bad. Yeah, it's sad. Daddy! Oh, no. I was tempted. Oh, no. I was <laughs> tempted because the first um, escort mission or protection mission pissed me off so much. But <laughs> yeah, it got better as the game went on. But I, I never I, harvested one. I, I just fully bring thought you were going to gonna harvest it. all of them. And I was really excited to see what that experience was going to be like. Uh, being I thought I would too, but I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Amanda, what were Honestly, you going to say? Oh, I kind of forgot the first thought, but I had a second thought. So it's okay. Um, <laughs> I was going to say that. Because from Bioshock One, get it having that um, that escort mission with little sister and how much I just I hated my entire life during <laughs> that period mm-hmm. of the game, but with this one, I mean it basically like it's a good majority of the game, but it it 
you're also a big daddy now, yeah. so I guess that's what made it significantly easier. It feels easier. right. And it just, I don't know, it felt, I had a lot of fun, like, just setting up my area, like, preparing it for Tra- an ambush by these big daddies. Exactly. Just by setting down traps and just, like, hacking the turrets, hacking my little floaty bot boys and just <laughs> getting ready. And it was so easy. It was so easy. Oh, it was so easy. Oh, my first thought. You said something about... Little sisters. Uh, yes, the little sisters and um, harvesting them. And it's like, well, there was just a point in the game where I felt I didn't have to harvest anymore. Because yeah. I had so much Adam. Me too. I adopted them and then I just rescued them. Because I'm like, okay, you're done. Like, I don't need it. Like, what? what I think it was the amusement park that I just... The one where you have to, you have to get the three... You have to get three sisters and, like, you're done. Yeah, that one I was like, let's go. Grab and go, baby. We're done here. And it was, mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful. <laughs> Loved it. 10 out of 10. Would do again. <laughs> Thank you for coming uh, did you to get that? Talk. Did you get that tonic that uh, you can name your security bots, too? No. Yeah, They're named by default, tonic. though. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, but it's funny. It's like if you I really used that feel one. attached for them, you would have loved that. Because you can like re- you can repair your little bots if they're yeah, hurt Charlie and they have names. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah. That's cute. That's actually really cool because that happened a lot. Where I'm like, man, I just he was so loyal. I didn't want to lose him <laughs> so quickly. You know, it came in <laughs> super handy because I think you and I played with one big difference. I think you and I played it kind of uh, uh, similarly, as far as like always using the the bots and all of that. And so it's an upgrade that lets you just. Especially later in the game when I just, I was like not running out of Eve when I became so overpowered. And you can spend some Eve to repair them. And you just feel, you feel like a double big daddy because you're taking care of your little sisters, you're repairing the bots, you're just, <laughs> it's daddyville all the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also being able to like, I, I don't know, maybe it was a thing in the, in the first one where you can just buy out Yeah. when you're hacking and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Was that also a thing in the first one? Yeah. Okay, well then I'm just a silly little goose and didn't notice. But <laughs> in the second one, I was, dude, I was loaded. Like I yeah. would, oh, one well, percent. Your max wallet is higher in this one yeah. too, right? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So everything <laughs> they made a well, a little bit easier yeah. in this game. They yeah. did. They definitely and did. <laughs> no one. There was nobody who saw the big daddies and didn't think it would be cool to be one. So. Yeah. They had to do it for yeah. this game, and it's Dude. it's good, but it's bad because now the game isn't as scary for someone it's, who wants to. Be yeah, scared. they definitely lost some of those horror elements that were yeah. in the first game. It you wasn't don't have nearly as scary. Big daddies anymore because you're like, I am you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like they but they tried to. That's why the splicers look so. The splicers are lankier and a bit taller now to kind of match your height, so you yeah, can kind of also, feel like they're a threat. The, okay, well, they were. I don't know if it was like like a conscious decision to do this but there were plenty of times where there were always like two big daddies Mm -hmm. instead of just one and there was only one little sister but i'm like so who yeah you have to wait to see which one she was crawling on well they're they're neutral most of the time there's a certain one that isn't but but i'm like dude what do i I don't like that's difficult right there. <laughs> I will yeah. say the, the the addition of the big sister I thought was cool. She was scary yeah. at the beginning. Had the effect yeah. wore off after a while because I found her more annoying than anything. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, she's kind of interesting. I loved her her music and the whistle and all yeah. of that. Like I love the atmosphere that they did in setting her up. I think honestly, the big sister is the place where the game's mechanics and it being easier, that's where the biggest letdown was. Because everything else, to me, I'm like, okay, you lose, yeah, you lose the horror elements. I'm not going to lie, I don't think I was scared ever playing this game. But I was not, it didn't bother me at all. I mean, maybe one, just because I'm not like a huge horror gamer, but I, as far as within the context of the game, I was okay with that. And I was even okay with the, the combat being borderline too easy. Because I enjoyed the fact that I was a big daddy. And I felt kind of like how in Doom, like, you're the Doom guy. Like, I, I felt like, I'm big daddy! <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so I, I just enjoyed that, like, even though it was easy, it was just me being... Uh, I went, spoiler alert, uh, I went drill only in this game. Drill And daddy. that, to me, 
increase my enjoyment a million times. I was the drill daddy. I had I had Electro Bolt 3 so everyone would get stunned and I would just run around while they were all still paralyzed and one shot like punch them all and it was just it, I just I had the, the the daddy power like it just it felt good. The one place yeah. where I kind of wish that I guess the game was scarier which I don't know how they would have handled it. Maybe they ranked her up as the game went on cuz it got easier as it went cuz early on the first big sister yeah she's a hard fight. Um but then later, like, once I'm overpowered, I'm like, cool, I can punch you to death in six, seven punches. Towards the end of the game, there's a there's a moment where uh, they throw two big sisters at you at once. And I guess that's supposed to be, like, a big, like, ah! I, I think I killed them both in about, like, 20 seconds. Because um, yeah. I shocked them. They were both shocked. And I just punched them both. And it took, like, four <laughs> to five hits. Did, did you like the drill dash? I'm glad that they added uh, that. I actually almost never used it. Uh, I almost yeah, never drill dash, and I almost never spun the drill either. I straight up just did the bop, bop, oh, bop, like the jazz. The spinning's the fun part. I know it is because you can even deflect bullets with it too. I but know, you don't have a lot of I fuel. Know, but I didn't do it. <laughs> um, but uh, that's yeah, because I wanted to feel like the bouncers from the first game. Yeah. So they do the the dash. There, there was just something fun about feeling quick and like. Bop, bop, like as a big powerful daddy just like boxing people it was because you can melee with any weapon in that game yeah so after a while i will say the game got kind of repetitive and that it did you would do the same thing in every area and then the big sister was just an ammo dump at the end and then you move on and do the same thing in the next area get your little sisters adopt them or harvest them and move on Mm -hmm. but i mean the gameplay and the new weapons were fun enough to where i didn't mind it too much and the game didn't overstay its welcome like it wasn't too long of an experience where i would have been horribly bored by it but um it it was just a little repetitive for me it's not a huge complaint because i did have fun but yeah i think that yeah. Do you? To me, it feels like a lot of the levels are kind of bland compared they, they to are. the first game. Level design is not as good. That's true. You feel the lack of that, like the lovingly crafted, like every single inch of space is used wisely in this game. Yeah, that that is one of the biggest. And it's a different development team. Um, yeah. And I think that to Palazzo's point, if I had not done my specific build or like done a build at least like if i had not gone out of the way to do that sort of role play that uh i think would have helped my enjoyment of bioshock one like i said in the last episode if i hadn't discovered that this time around i do feel like it would have gotten a little stale towards the end because i even felt that with um not to get too much into the dlc right now but i had a crash in the dlc when i was like 30 minutes from the very end of it and so i had to go back and replay like I want to say close to two hours worth of gameplay and in the DLC, since it's like a separate experience, you don't, I I didn't get to come in as the drill daddy. So it was a little more just kind of like random gameplay. And by the time I got to the end of the DLC, including my re the forced replay, I was kind of sick. Like I just wanted to get to the end of it, not because it was bad, but just like it had just overstayed its welcome. Uh If it hadn't crashed and I had played it straight through I would have gotten to the end, and it would have been perfectly cut off. Amanda had a few crashes. I know that. <laughs> I'm sorry. A few? Oh, Did boy. you say a few? Maybe a little more oh. than a few. Oh, my friends. My first note on my little booklet <laughs> of notes says, save, save, save even more than before, because, oh, my word, this game just crash, like crash. You would think it's Crash Bandicoot. It's not. <laughs> Bioshock 2! It crashed so many times. Oh, I saved so much. You can ask the dudes. I saved... <laughs> oh, I say I saved probably more times than I did, like, little sisters. Like, that's <laughs> how... That's how I did this, okay? And it worked. It worked in the end. But literally, like, the final battle, I had to replay that battle, like, ah! a solid five six times Ooh, that's not good now the thing is at that point (laughs) i'm like okay it's a blessing and a curse because now i know exactly what i need (laughs) to do i know where the traps need to be set up i know what's coming (laughs) like i was oh i was op okay but at the same time (laughs) no one likes a crash no one (laughs) likes a crash but you know 
C'est la vie. It is what it is. I'm gonna have to. I'm pretty sure that's a remastered thing, or, or and and remastered on PC. I heard was the super glitchiest. So I ran into sorry. one bad glitch, not a game crash, but at one point the next screen wouldn't load. I was stuck on the loading screen for a while, and I'm like, I gotta just restart the game because it's not gonna move on. And I had to go back a little bit. It wasn't too bad, but it was like, why is this here? Fix your game, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a shame. <laughs> oh, man. L- like we said, kind of, it feels like the main takeaway, and one of the things for me was that this game kind of feels like we picked up right where we left off as far as as far as far it being a game and mechanically and, and even visually and everything. Like, it, it does feel like it's continued straight out of bioshock so do any of you have any other things you want to comment on mechanically or can we go into a section where we talk about uh narrative and like particular sections of uh the game? is is music a mechanic thing where, where does music uh, sure sure Let, let's talk about music now because i will say i love the music in this game i do too i think they, it, they i i'm a sucker for a good violin jam. And they just went home with the violin in this game. Yes. Especially yes. the part where you see the underwater city for the first time. And for those of you that don't know, there's small underwater sections in this game where you're That's walking the other thing I wanted to through talk the city. About, yes. Oh, my God. And you see the city in front of you and the violin is swelling. It's just, oh, it, it is so cool. I love the music in this game. Yeah. So, yeah, they took the little violin bits from the first game. Yeah. And, yeah, they just sent it through the whole rest of the second game. <laughs> it it, it was the Doom Eternal soundtrack to uh, to 2016's Doom, but with Bioshock <laughs> and the strings. Um, and on the, the underwater sections, I love those because early on in the game, there's one section where since you're in the Big Daddy suit, you can be in the sea. And so you're, like, you're bouncing around in the water and there's, like... There's bodies floating, like, in front of you, but, like, above, and you can jump up to loot them. Uh, and they're, like, atom slugs, like, hidden away on different things, and you're exploring this. And I thought it was a one-time section, and I remember asking Palazzo on stream, I was like, oh, man, are there more of these? I hope there are more of these. And you were like, I don't think you want me to answer that. And just, like, every time, because it doesn't happen too often, but every time I got to go into the water, it was just such a joy to have, like, two, three minutes yeah, just it's cool. bouncing around. Did you like it when places would get flooded and they were basically underwater? Like level, the whole level of um, Popper's – no, not Popper's Drop. Siren Alley, I think it's completely flooded. Yeah. Did no, you enjoy that? I didn't like it because it blocked Ooh. me off from exploration and I didn't know it was going <laughs> to do that. I wasn't done exploring the area and um, the place flooded and I couldn't go back and look at other things I wanted to go and look at but it was a cool effect it was cinematic it was neat but in terms of my enjoyment I didn't appreciate it I learned my lesson in Bioshock 1 uh, as far as like explore everything explore everything and explore first yeah Yeah. Um, I also like that uh, okay that's kind of it for me uh, mechanically anyone else? Um, I liked that you can dual wield plasmids and weapons. Yeah. That was. Oh yeah. I oh yeah yeah. That's one of those huge quality of life improvements that changes the way you play yeah. the game. Yeah. And everything's a melee weapon now, not just <laughs> the wrench. Yeah. I okay. bopped everything. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I think now we can move into uh, discussing both narrative and just kind of particular chunks of the game and how like different things there affected us. Uh, and so I think for me the big picture, the what you need to know about this one is that it's a it's a much sim- simpler narrative from Bioshock One. It is simplified. It is it follows in the footsteps. It's still in that spirit of the game, but it's not. Uh, it's one of those areas. It, it, much like the environments are missing the like the little details that are tucked away. The narrative is the same way. The, the big picture looks the same, but there's not as many. Uh, little flourishes hidden everywhere there's little holes in this narrative too yeah um and so overall i keep seeing these quality of life changes you're sacrificing detail for quality of life i feel like this one is easier to follow on like a first playthrough and in a way where like i feel like if you play it again i still think you can have fun on a second playthrough but i don't think you will have as many epiphanies as say when you're revisiting bioshock one right um and so it, you know, it would have been nice to maybe have a little more uh, 
um, environmental storytelling and stuff like that. But I did not have any qualms with the story. And I felt that uh, emotionally, as far as uh, feeling motivated, I felt this one was more effective at motivating me to go through the world, uh, not just for the sake of exploration, but narratively. Having uh, your daughter, so to speak, uh, speaking to you throughout the game was was a big thing that I was like, yeah, I do want to get to her. I'm not just helping Atlas, like whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I feel personally invested in this. And the way you deal... I, I genuinely had to stop and think at one point with uh, the sort of mid-bosses. I was like, how am I going to handle you? Because you get choices. And so, like, normally, I'm a murder hobo in games. Like, I'll just kill anyone who I can kill. But, like, I got to them and I was like... I don't know, like, mm, I, I would have to sit there and I would, like, ask and I'd be like, okay, how did how did you affect my story in getting here? Do I want to let you live? And ultimately, I like that that also played a, played a role in uh, the, the development with your daughter. And there are later sections that I really want to get into, but that's my big opening statement, I guess. And I'm curious as to how you guys felt with, uh, with the narrative. I'm just going to jump in because... Go. <laughs> oh, oh, I just hardcore agree with that last thing you just said about how your decisions throughout the entire game just kind of steer like Ele Eleanor's moral compass and I'm just and she's been watching you like the whole time and I just think it's such a beautiful thing because they really do push this whole father-daughter mm -hmm. kind of relationship and I'm like that's I'm like look at that look at that look what what I don't know I thought it was so neat and I was really into it so that by the end of the game and, like, the monologue she has, I mean, also, like, yeah. I guess, depending on what path you chose. Yeah, yeah, But it was just, like, it was really sweet. And, like, the entire time, I also just liked Eleanor as a character. I, I did, like, too. My, I'm like, my daughter is, like, rad, dude. She's so cool. She is rebellious. Especially at like the her. end. Yeah, and I'm like, she is just like her father. She's been helping you out from the beginning, like sending the little sisters to help you and get you the tonics and the, everything. You, you, it's just, I don't know. I really liked it. I really liked what they did there with that narrative. It I'm was yeah. curious. Beautiful. Was anyone, did anyone question where Tenenbaum was during the yes! same? Yes. I yeah, questioned but, I mean, that the whole time. She jets off at the beginning, right? She tells you she's leaving. What? But I assumed she would always come back. I'm like, where yeah. did you I did go? Too. And, and then you don't know until you play the DLC where she's been. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, I, I have like a good thing and a bad thing to say about this game's story. Go for it. I'll, I guess I'll start with the good thing. Is the I think <laughs> this game handles its supporting characters maybe the best mm -hmm. because it frames it in such a way where your moral decisions, you're like, oh, uh, I don't know what I want to do here if yes. I want to kill you or if I don't want to kill you. In the first game, you don't really think anything of it because everyone's constantly fucking with you that you're like, screw it, I'll just shoot you and I won't think anything else of it. But in this one, by the time you get to the end part of each section, um, Sinclair, who's your, like your atlas i guess <laughs> but much much nicer much much cooler um he, he's he kind of frames it in a way like oh i don't know if you necessarily want to kill them because this is not this and then the character grace is like oh you're just a monster and uh, monsters kill and then you make the decision not to and then she has like a change of heart and is like oh was i wrong and she questions her own morality mm -hmm. and like little details like that it, it's kind of cool and i'm interested to see like what would have happened if you made a different decision for some of those guys or um the alexander the third guy was that his name Alex the great yeah where he's yeah. speaking to you from his past recordings and like i'm a monster now i'm crazy just put me out of my misery i didn't do that because i wanted the trophy but i also want to know what it would have been like if you did put him out of his misery really cool things like that sorry i just to interject since you're on it for me, that was my biggest regret of the game for multiple reasons, because I wanted to kill him. I told him from the beginning, like I heard it, and I was like, yeah, it makes sense, I'll kill you. The only reason I didn't kill him was because I didn't realize I had to do something at the spot I already was, and I turned mm. around, and I locked myself out by accident. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> killing him would have given me the, the ending that I think is the best. I got the second yeah, yeah. best ending, but by not killing him, because, because I chose to spare everyone else... Um, I ended up getting a slightly not worse ending, but just you got the the, the goody two shoes. You ending. got the goody two shoes one, which is not the best one yeah, in this game. I think it um, was the best one. <laughs> Amanda, we'll were you gonna say something we, about? We'll talk Grace. about when we get there. 
What? Were you going to say something about Grace or something? Or no? I was going to say something about Grace. Yeah. Nick, go oh. ahead. You can go ahead. You can go She's the only one that's worth um, gameplay-wise. She's the only one that helps you if you spare her. She gives you those two security bots. Oh. And then in the next level, she'll give you uh, some goodies in a pneumo tube. Or yeah. The other ones don't give you jack. But even well, the, the second guy, I was like, you're not, you're not worth killing. I didn't want to for that no. reason. Yeah, when yeah. you think about it, he's the reason you and Eleanor are together. So I actually... Yeah. Right. But for my perfect ending, I might have to uh, <laughs> do away with him. For your perfect ending. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I thought that was really cool also just to see because especially with Grace, it's just like, I don't know. I thought I just found that because people change. People change and people are allowed to change and learn yeah. and grow. So I like in real life, you know, so I'm like, OK, yeah, they could do that in video games, too. Um, I like seeing that in a quote-unquote villain. And especially just now where I feel like it's become so impossible for anyone to ever change. I feel like... Exactly. So I'm just... I just... I don't know. I I really... I thought that was really beautiful. And also just like the fact that that like sparing someone's life, I guess, even though for me, I knew from the beginning, I was like, I'm not... I have no reason to kill you with any of them I'm like I'm like I just didn't feel it I don't know I just don't feel the need to kill you I'm like you're not even attacking me like you're literally just sitting you're smoking your cigarette what am I whoa, whoa, I'm not gonna ruin your well, vibe like you're vibing you know what I mean but <laughs> she did kill you though okay 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 she had you kill yourself okay yes okay all right but look, well that's that's look. lamb I think lamb is different from the three others yeah, yeah. and even then oh even that's then, you talking about I can about. change okay. too you know what I mean but I just thought it was okay, nice yeah. to have like acts of kindness in the end like in such in a world that they're clearly so used to things just being so dark and awful, you know, it just, I don't know, it pays off. And in a way. I just remembered something. I was going to say this was a negative, but then I remembered a part about the game. And I'm like, no, actually, it's kind of a positive. Because um, in my opinion, I don't know if you guys agree, Lamb isn't that strong of a villain. No. At least for most of the way, I wasn't nuts about her. Um and at the end, I thought what they were going to do was actually kill Eleanor. I thought your... she was dead when she did the pillow thing. Yeah. I thought she was dead. And at, at the time, I'm like, that's such a missed opportunity because that that increases Lamb's value as a villain. And it gives you such an impetus to, like, you know, go mm-hmm. after her at the end. However, <laughs> my favorite character in this game, Sinclair, uh, Sinclair, who's with you the whole time, who is so nice, who's so sweet, that soothing voice... <laughs> He's so at, slimy, and the game tells you he's slimy. And I love throughout. it. I love it so much. But at the end, after you save Eleanor and you have her with you as a big sister that's helping you out, they they put Ele- or um Sinclair in a big daddy suit, and he's starting to lose his mind. And you're forced. The game forces you to kill him to get the key from him and he asks you to put him out of his misery and oh my god i have never had a deeper despair in a video game before <laughs> and i've never wanted to go after a villain more in my life um Do you which know is... what his symbol is for his suit no subject omega because he's the last one he's the end oh ah. what's that that's so Very cool sad. i love uh, how much you connected to Sinclair because I, I thought, loved him so much. I know John didn't trust him the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I could not care less, really. Like, not in a bad way, but I was just like, he's there. Like, the whole time I was just trying to figure out, I'm like, what's his MO? Like, at the end of the day, because the game tells you he's slimy. Like, they're trying to get you to distrust him from the beginning. Um, even like, and I I don't, I would assume that this was not yeah, on. But Tenenbaum. Tenenbaum trusted you with him. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what that's what I'm But she tells you point. she she goes, I wouldn't trust him, but he's like the best choice we got. But like he's not evil, but like eh, some stuff is like screwed up with him. And you listen to the audio tapes and like the stuff he does is like pretty screwed up. It's not evil, but it's like it's screwed up. And they even do the again. I don't think this is unintentional. Uh, I feel like they probably thought about this, but like how in the original game Atlas had a southern accent and they got rid of it because no one trusted him. And then in this game, yeah. they just give Sinclair the Southern accent. And I'm like, yeah, there it is. Uh, and so I kept wondering, I was like, is he just going to suddenly go from being slimy to being evil? Or is he going to do something super selfless? And he doesn't. And I love that because it's just, I feel like this game does uh, humanity pretty well. Where it's just like, yeah, like he's a he's a dude. He's not evil. He did some, some shitty stuff. He's an opportunist. Yeah. 
And then, but that's at, why they make you feel died. bad for him in the end because he did do something selfless. I feel like he could have left the entire time, but he didn't. He was there and helped you all the way through. Yeah. And he he almost sacrifices himself at the end for the cause in a way. I'm glad it had the impact on you because it didn't have that much on me. <laughs> oh, but I appreciated I it in a different light. It, it, in the yeah. light of it just being realistic in that sometimes uh, shit sucks and then you die. Like, <laughs> yeah, um, it's true. I, again, I didn't dislike him as a character. And plus he was like that. swaying you to spare Grace. Exactly. Yeah, he, he had different... He was a complex character and I appreciated that. Yeah. He wasn't Atlas or Fontaine who goes... <laughs> <laughs> for like three right. minutes when, when he <laughs> reveals himself, you know? Exactly. <laughs> wow. I don't really remember yeah. either of them ever doing that. But You don't remember Fontaine being like... Fontaine yeah, when he goes from Atlas <laughs> to Fontaine. <laughs> okay, nice that, yeah. work, boy Oh, there you go. Thank you for jogging my memory. There it is. Yeah, found it. <laughs> that whole thing where you have to watch uh, slowly as his meter fills up Ryan's... Uh, I guess his <laughs> ruling the city bar, yeah. the progress goes from uh, Ryan, Indus- no, Ryan Industries to Fontaine Futuristics. Mm-hmm. And like right at the end, it dings like, thanks for everything, kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> He's very comical uh, enemy. Um, but it's, ch- it, I guess, nostalgia reasons. It was charming to me. I didn't hate it, but I was like, wow, this is really cheesy. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that his favorite movie, Ken Levine, the director, is um, uh, Miller's Crossing. And uh. apparently he, he's – I don't really like that movie. I watched it. I was like, I don't get it. But uh, <laughs> apparently Fontaine's ex- inspired from that yeah. movie. So. Oh, I, I also love how this game um, – I mean, granted, it's set in Rapture, but I love it's uh, how self-referential it is to the original game. Like when you're yeah. uh, when you're in the the warehouse with all of uh, Cohen's censored art, and even like yeah. the amount of times the fact that Andrew Ryan is still such a strong presence in yeah. the world. Yeah, there's though, a lot of Andrew Ryan lore that you could find. The, that was cool. I love his amusement park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did anyone Did you know get the, the achievement? The, the golf club. The, amu- the amusement. Yeah, I didn't know about it until after I finished the game. You use a golf club to take the head off the animatronic, and you get an achievement. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Rip. Yeah. The description of the trophy too is like, "Pay your respects to Andrew Ryan," yeah. which I think is funny. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's me again, just with another one of my super quick messages. This week, first of all, we just wanted to thank you all for the love that we've been seeing on the show lately. This last week was incredible, and we've been getting a lot of love and downloads, so thank you. And if you enjoy what we're doing, we hope that you subscribe and continue to share and and listen with us. That said, if you're new to the show and wondering how you might be able to support us, we're currently nearing the end of our launch Indiegogo campaign, which is linked in the show notes. Donors of any amount, including just $1, will be able to join our Discord at the end of the campaign, which will give you ways to vote and influence what the show looks like moving forward. There are also a ton of other wonderful rewards, and we actually have two donor-sponsored episodes coming soon on some really fun games that we're looking forward to doing. So, if you want to look at anything like that, go check out the Indiegogo and see if there's anything that might interest you. And, once again, we would like to thank all of our founding parents who have donated to the Indiegogo campaign. These include Adriana Larcón, Juan Zorrilla, Will Williams, Anne Baird, Jerry Benetados, Katrina Scott, Carolina Riverol, Alejandro Larcón, and Giovanni Sorrilla. Thank you all so much. And one final note, as some of you may be aware in many places throughout the country, uh, fireworks have been going off quite frequently. So there's actually a little bit of that that snuck into this recording that we weren't able to get out. So apologies for that. It's kind of muted and in the back, but those are some of the uh, weird thumps that show up. So apologies there. With that out of the way, please get back to enjoying our review of Bioshock 2. It was a lot of fun. And we have our final review of Bioshock Week coming on Friday with Bioshock Infinite, which I think is going to be a very different episode. So stay tuned for that. I'm curious. Do you, if you, well, are you guys curious at all about Mark Meltzer? Oh God, or, I know. Do you the even name. know who I, that is? Yes, yes, yes. I know the name. Uh, um, give me a. He's slide. the only audio diary that's colored. Oh. Everyone else is in black and white. His audio diaries have color. 
Yeah, you never see him. This was like a... Now, see, I played the game when it already came out, but apparently before Bioshock 2 came out, they did this marketing thing with Mark Meltzer where you had to like go online and figure out this like puzzle box to, uh, where it came from. It came from Rapture or something. Uh-huh. But uh, they, they talk about how... Like the sisters are older in this game, the little sisters and and the big sisters, yeah. But the little sisters are older because Lamb had been sending uh big sisters to capture little sisters yeah. from the surface and bring them down. And Mark Meltzer's daughter happened to be one of them. <gasps> yes, uh, I I think I remember hearing his logs. Uh, yeah. So he leaves little logs around where he's like, "This is a place called Rapture, apparently, and all these people are crazy. I'm just trying to find Cindy. Yeah, whatever. Oh, that guy. Yeah, I yeah. remember now. And and you hear even in Dionysus Park where he's shooting, it's like, stay back, that's my little girl. Mm-hmm. And then he leaves an audio diary where it's like, stay back, that's my little girl. It's like, he was just here. Well, I didn't get to see him. Where'd they go? And you don't find him until uh, Fontaine Futuristics where he was pair bonded with Cindy as little. So he became a big daddy and Cindy became a little sister. Oh. And you have to kill Mark Meltzer to save Cindy. But oh he leaves God. the audio diary. He's like, you do whatever you want. As long as I'm with Cindy, I'm a happy man. So I really hate Lamb. Like, for... <laughs> yeah. I really hate Lamb. Like, I I don't think she's uh, someone that yeah. can... I think she's too far gone. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, and I actually, that makes that's, her a, a that's the villain. thing about Lamb. I don't think she was a super powerful villain. But what I liked about her was that she was realistic. Again, like like with a lot of the characters. Because she took this thing that, I mean, if I had to fall on either end of the philosophy between the two. Utopias, yeah, she's on the opposite. Yeah, I, of the ideal. I personally fall a little more towards Lamb's ideas. But then she turns them into like the like as someone who I'm like I see the benefit in what you're saying, but you're turning it into the most awful, stupid thing, and you're the reason that we can't have this in real life. Like it's people like yeah. you that ruin it, and so that frustrated me. It felt like a real person. It felt like like she's the person that gets conjured up in these like hypothetical arguments uh, yeah. when you're like trying to make decent points. Well, just like just like Fontaine is the reason that you can't have the objectivist. Exactly. One. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do agree with her. Uh, she says Utopia is not a place but a people. Yes. Um, much like Asgard. But yeah, it's pretty much just the opposite side of a utopia where everyone is working for each other for the collective. But then the splices are already so messed up yeah. uh, and they'll do whatever she says and they're it's a religion, finding a big... Not a... It's an honor to sacrifice yourself for a little sister so the Adam can go through the city. Yeah. You and know what? I, had get, I, th- I thought uh, was a cool thing was... Um, you could like see the relationship between Lamb and Andrew Ryan in some of the audio diaries. Oh yeah, and yeah, he's I, very threatened by her. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was so cool. And there was a couple times I was actually kind of rooting for Andrew Ryan in the diaries, even though like you yeah. know what happens to him. I just thought that dynamic was cool. Really yeah, because cool. she can exert control over people because she has made herself the leader of these people and essentially turned it into like this like religious cult and taken this thing that yeah. that could should be like devoid of that and created these fanatics. Whereas yeah. Andrew Ryan, like, I mean, while, yeah, he was like the leader, but there came a point where he had to choose to take control and it went against his own philosophy yeah. because someone like her can get people who are equally fanatic, but be able to give them orders without being questioned. Cause she could just say it's for the family. It's for the greater good. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, cause I know Ryan, uh, eventually he had pheromones in the air to control the splicers. So I'm pretty sure when you killed him and left in the first game, she might be using the same pheromones to control them as well. So that's a big advantage for her. Yeah. Um, she also had Gil, who's supposed to be the perfect utopian, mm-hmm. who's the experiment that just went completely wrong. And if you look on the wiki, his model is really interesting. It's very gross, like this giant fetus in an atom mm. vat. Ugh. Uh, but yeah, he was supposed to be like the one to take care of everyone's problems and understand everybody and be super smart, the perfect utopian. And yeah, he's just screwed up, and he has the funny little eyebot yeah, flying yeah. around. Singing. <laughs> I know what you're up to, Milado. <laughs> <laughs> he was fun. I I really enjoyed his character. I like him too. Yeah, I want to talk about the little sister section because that was. Not that, my favorite I love part that. of the game, but I it was the most interesting part of the game for sure, and I really really yeah. liked it. I love that because cool. I love one. It comes at such a good moment. Like I remember we were streaming, and like I was talking about what was happening on screen, 
And when she smothers um, Eleanor, that's when Am- oh. that's when I told Amanda, I went, Amanda, get off the stream, get off the stream, get off the stream, get off the stream. Because <laughs> I thought we were at the end of the game, pretty much. I was like, oh, no. But then, like, then this happens. And I love so many different facets about the thing as a little sister. Primarily, the fact that essentially all of them have technically been Eleanor in one way or another. Which is why I was so, I was hoping that Palazzo was harvesting them all. Because I'm like, I, I wonder how it feels to then be like, okay, cool, I saved my daughter. Oh my god, all the little girls I killed, I killed my daughter over and over and over again. <laughs> um, that must I be such tempted. a... Yeah, it, it must have been a, a, like a really cool moment for people who played in that fashion. When... Well, when Eleanor takes you out of that uh, world, the little sister's uh, conscious, yeah. uh, depending on whether you rescue or harvest, she will rescue or harvest that little sister. Yes, yes, I, I, I saw. Yeah. Um, there, well, there's a couple of things that it affects. It affects that. It affects up for the final fight, whether she goes into the water to boil it alone or she's surrounded by all the little sisters if you've saved them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, of course, the ending ending as well. But I, I, did you catch, I don't know if you know this, learn, uh picked it up because it's very quick but when you're looking at yourself through the little sister's eyes Mm -hmm. your suit is just so much cleaner and colorful (laughs) and not covered in barnacles that's what i loved about that whole section the protagonist suit (laughs) yeah because i was like okay what is this uh because at first they they don't start you where you've already seen you don't know where you are playing as a little sister and you're like oh cool there's a little section where they're they're safe and like and you see the other people and i'm like oh there are still normal people in rapture that's great and then when yeah. you get the first flash i was like oh my god because i started to like i was like no yeah maybe nah, nah nah and then when it finally flashes and you see like the world around you i was like yeah oh my god and i just i love that they showed us that that was such a cool experience oh, to see it's, how the yeah. little sisters see the world even and they do this sweet. creepy drill in the background guy screaming yeah. that always when games do that <laughs> gives me chills the, the one the, the biggest plot hole for me and i think it's because i was just so interested in that little sister section was uh because i started getting nervous i was like oh i can't walk in front of that splicer because he'll attack me and then they they didn't they Uh. yeah they don't uh because and you don't have a a big daddy either so like they should have killed me but they didn't there was one that snatches at you and i guess the other two are just too far gone to even i guess what's happening oh i was scared they would attack me so i walked around them in the areas that i could i did that i did that too when i was wondering yeah they just look like two two people having a normal conversation maybe you know what because they work for lamb maybe Maybe. they know not to do that yeah um but yeah, you have the section. one grabbing you. Get over here, you little moppet or something. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went towards that guy. And then yeah, and, and and you quickly flashed to reality for exactly. a second. Like, oh, I was like, Whoa. la la la. That was the moment I was like, oh, this is, this is awful. This is brilliant, but it's awful. Yeah, yeah. Seeing ourselves dead on not dead, but like unconscious yeah. on that bed, I'm yeah. like, is this what an out of body experience feels like? <laughs> <laughs> Me looking at my daddy self there, but, just. But look how nice out. you look. I know. That, it's the definition of plot armor. <laughs> <laughs> Even the ocean can't penetrate it. Yeah. And also how guilty I felt, uh, especially when you're playing as the little sister and you're harvesting bodies. Because the whole game, they're harvesting bodies, but you're like, yeah, that's what they do. But then when you realize that they don't even know what they're doing, that to them it looks like this nice thing. And I'm like, I'm making them yeah. stab things so I can get at them. Like, it, it screwed with yeah, me they, a little bit. They was... talk, They have that in the first game, too. If you look in there in Point Prometheus, they have their rooms where it's like all good girls gather. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Gather from little angels. But I just love here that we actually get to see it through their eyes. And I just didn't know that helpful. they would actually see the world differently. And so actually seeing that was very cool and also like had an effect on me and it, i love yeah, it no yeah. for sure for sure it's kind of messed up that the whole game you're killing these little sisters daddies and then claiming them as your own <laughs> yeah. it's like i killed your father you're mine now now come harvest stuff for me yeah it's funny how definitively did you guys take on the role of the big daddy like how did, was it uh narratively resonant for you because i will say that for me the two fake out endings worked super well because one when when they smother her, I'm like no, like I'm freaking out. And then when the explosion goes off, I freaked out because I was like, are you kidding me? And then when I saw she zapped out, I was completely at peace as soon as that happened. I went, okay, that's fine, kill me. It's it's okay. 
It's okay. She made it up. Okay. So the fact that she can teleport is like one of the holes to me. Like Eleanor just has give even gives you a plasma. It's like whenever you need me, just summon me. Like why didn't she just follow me? I don't know. And she says like I'm gonna go off and do other stuff. Like she tells you what she's doing when she leaves. I don't know. I didn't. That oh, didn't bother me too much. Someone being able to teleport, like, how are you being trapped by your mama when you can do all this stuff? I guess. And she's also the one that brought you back to life. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget that. Why didn't she put her own thing in the her own code in the Vita Chamber or Tenenbaum's code in the Vita Chamber? Just to you have a team going with a bunch of invulnerable people. I think, but it's would the, help. it's the little sister, big daddy bond. It's Mr. Bubble. Yeah, it's cute. It's I'm just saying, it's those just... are some of the holes in this. It, this story isn't as airtight to me. It's, oh, no, it's, it's a very it's good story. It's not. But it's so, a very good but story. You, but I just your, loved how everything. To your prompt. Everything had a, <laughs> go ahead, Nick. Just like that, everything had an explanation in the first game. That's all. To your prompt about the, how connected I was to being a daddy in this game, um, I don't know why. I didn't give a damn about the other little girls. I cared about my daughter. I cared about Eleanor and saving her. Otherwise, even though I adopted all the other ones, I didn't care what happened to them. I really didn't. Um, But uh, I I do think they should have committed to killing off Eleanor because I feel like you would have gotten a stronger emotion. I liked the choice they went with. I didn't hate it because I did like Eleanor as a character, but it might have been more powerful if they did kill her off in the end and see what direction you would have gone then the only reason Um, i disagree with you there is because to me it seems like it's the story of being a daddy and so i don't know that it would have i don't know that they would have made it to a a satisfying conclusion if they killed your daughter off and then you still had to like finish the game and it's just like this empty daddy not that i mean you can you can do it in a sad way and i think there are sad endings to the game but I think it's nice that, like, you accomplish your goal as, as a daddy. And, like, I think it's better that you die because it's true to the big daddy. Yeah. True. Exactly. Or, exactly. No, I guess a better way to have framed it was, like, if they decided to kill her, you still could have made a happy ending because her sacrifice could have been for the sake of maybe the other little girls and they got sure, saved as well. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can see. I, I see both sides. I don't hate the yeah. direction they went. I just. I think I would prefer the other one. What I don't like is the eight. I think it's eight. Eight different endings. That kind of dilutes the rest of the story for me. I wish they committed though? to either it, one or just two endings, like the well, first game. I don't know. But, John is right. You are playing the role mm-hmm. of the big daddy here, and the big daddies are all about protecting. They don't even care about their own selves. Even in the first one. If they don't have a little sister near them, you walk in front of them, they just slap you out of the way. They don't even care. Like, they don't hurt you or anything. So they don't even care about getting their own selves hurt. It's all about protecting. So this is, like, more true to the role, I guess. Yeah, but if they killed Eleanor, that could have been a statement of you failed as a daddy and how would you feel in that moment? He doesn't feel. He's already a Frankenstein. But he does feel to an extent to be able to make decisions to kill or not kill certain people. I just don't know that there would have been... Like like a really satisfying path for that as as a big daddy, you know. Like yeah. if you were if you were normal, like just a dad. If you were a dad and they killed your daughter, sure you can go John Wick, I guess. Um, but like as a big daddy, I feel like at that point I would just like lay down and die. Yeah, like a big daddy becoming an actual parent to me is cool. like yeah. you actually your actions did have an effect, even though they weren't supposed to. Your will was stripped of you before. Mm-hmm. Your free will. And and to right. touch on your point with the multiple endings diluting it, I don't I don't agree with that, only because I think you're viewing it from like a completionist standpoint, but like if you're experiencing the game, like the other endings don't matter. Theoretically you shouldn't even know that there are other endings. You get the ending that you get based on, on your experience in the story. So like I don't I know. just don't, I don't like know how it having the, multiple endings dilutes. In the experience. context of a franchise that seems to have a very specific this is the story this is our canon ending it almost i don't know devalues it to an extent not incredibly because i did enjoy the story all the way through but eight endings why it's not a telltale game it's not a your choices affect everything kind of story i just didn't care for it in this franchise it kind of is, though. And, uh, like, it's not eight completely different endings. They're eight slight variations. 
to reflect that your moral choices mattered in this game. It's it, I, the two choices that influence it are how you handle the little sisters and how you handle uh, the foes. So basically, it, it comes down to whether Eleanor learns to uh, um, to be forgiving always, to always be vengeful, to only look out for herself, or to dish out justice as she deems necessary. Like it, that's essentially what it comes down to. And then like. It becomes eight because, like, you get a choice in one of them in, like, the evil ending where, like, you get to pick yeah. that. Yeah, I, I do like that it directly connects to she learned from you. Yeah. Her choices are based on what you taught her. I like that. I think eight's a little too much. And I don't know if they meant for this connection to happen, but mm-hmm. I do think Bioshock Infinite kind of helps its case a little bit with eight different endings. I don't know if they tried to explain that away in Infinite, but you kind of can. I guess we can talk about that. When we get to infinite. yeah, but what yeah. what I will say is that you saying like eight is too much. I mean, I can respect your opinion on it, but saying like eight is too much, I'm like I don't see how the number matters because you get an ending based on how you play, and I think that they made as many as they felt was necessary to make it feel like uh like you influence this daughter in the way that a, a father would, like the way that she learned. That was just what it took to like give it nuance so that all your all your big choices, quote unquote, felt meaningful. But that's that's just how I see it. I don't know. It, it didn't. I I guess that. I just preferred everything wrapped up, kind of smoother and nicer than a story with multiple endings would. This game handled it tactfully, but eh, I don't. I don't, I I do, don't want to keep harping on the multiple endings, but I'm curious. What was unsmooth about the way it wrapped up? <laughs> Not necessarily with my specific ending because I only got one. But when you go mm-hmm. back and look at everything else it's like why was it necessary to do all these different ones it it, nuance when you watch all the other ones it devalues it in a way for me that's just my preference though that's fine i i will maintain that i disagree with you though (laughs) all right that's fine (laughs) uh what about everyone else should i say what my favorite ending is and see if it's yours i'm pretty sure it is but go for it yeah yeah that yeah obviously i want her to drown Mm -hmm. lamb (laughs) yeah and then when she has the option to take your consciousness in with her uh i don't want her to be a bad girl so i refuse and i pretty much abandon her which is really sad but and she's alone because she doesn't have her mom but she's a good girl she could take care of herself no your ending is not my favorite ending yeah, I, I don't want her to suck up my soul and become evil. So uh, apparently I'm the evil one. So I, I'd rather just mm-hmm. let her be alone, but have her evil mom out of the way. My no, favorite's the, the tier below the goody two-shoes. That's ending. the one I'm talking about. In, yeah. in the ending I'm talking about, you don't even get that choice at all. Like that choice is not presented to you. It's just she drowns her because she uh, she deserves to be brought to justice. But then everything else is the same as the good ending. Yeah, that's my favorite. Wait, 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 wait. So you drown her, and then you have that little thing with the little toy? Yes. Yeah. Don't you have to... I thought you had to be super good for that. Yeah, you have to be super good. Because, okay, the super good ending, she lets Lamb live, period. Yeah. There's yeah. the other ending where she lets Lamb... Or, or sorry, she, she drowns Lamb, but everything yeah. else is the same as the Goody Two-Shoes ending. Like she's with all the little girls, yes. and uh, yes, she hands her the little baseball toy yes. and yeah. drops it in the water. Yeah, I oh, looked I it up. Not... To get that ending, you have to adopt all the little sisters and save them, but you have to kill at least one of the supporting characters. Ew, yeah. that is a lot better. <laughs> yeah, if I could do that, then yeah, I don't want her to be all alone. <laughs> I'm taking your PhD away, Nick. Her dialogue says, uh, she goes, you taught me, what is it? She, t- You taught me to be uh, kind and, and forgiving and that people can change, but you also taught me that justice uh, um, needs to be dealt fairly or something along those lines. So that's what she says when she's drowning her. But then everything else is the, um, but you you were never unkind to those who didn't deserve it and blah, 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 blah. Uh, and so I will carry you with me everywhere and you will guide me in yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't know maybe i just felt guilty and was like i better just leave her i'm the evil guy you don't, don't get the choice though you don't get the her. choice okay well there is one where you do get the yeah, choice. Yeah, Sa- save the yourself or sacrifice ending, yourself so yeah yeah 
And if you, yeah, if you save yourself, that's when she's like, your memories, your drives, and you'll always be there. And you see the corpses floating up, and it's all stormy. Yeah, I don't like, like the that. The world will never <laughs> see me coming. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Look, I'm going to go, but you figure things out. You're a big girl now. You get it. Go watch them. I'll link, that- uh, I'll link in the show notes, uh, like, all the endings for anyone who's curious, because I know we've been, like, going on about all these endings. <laughs> Um, it was sh- something yeah. really stuck with me that image uh, when you abandon her uh, and you're seeing the tower like upside down yeah. at an angle. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. Some- something just really stuck with me there. I made that my phone background for a bit. <laughs> it, I mean, it, they're all, in my opinion, and I guess this is where we we differ. They all seem like powerful endings. I think that uh, the the one that made me feel the most good as a spectator, though, is is the one I'm talking about. Um, yeah. But that seems super powerful. It was just like. It, it, it'd it be more like heart wrenching as opposed to like, I yeah, guess, satisfying, yeah. you know? I guess it feels like a cop out to me. It's like, what, you were too lazy to make a solid ending and have the fans just agree with it? I don't well, know. I don't think it's lazy if you go out of your way to make so many endings yeah, and it's extra make those effort. branches. I don't know. Feels like you're dodging a definitive. <laughs> They're going to, I mean, if they made a sequel to that, they would have to choose one like they mm-hmm. did. They, they, they chose with for the Bioshock first one, one. They chose yeah. the good ending. Or exactly. just go with a, like, an unrelated plot line as well. Also, why is Lamb staying here for 10 more years in this already, like, destroyed city? Because it's the only, it's the only place she would be able to get her ideas to work. She's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Without Andrew Ryan, Lamb would not have been able to exist because Andrew Ryan created this lawless place where then she could impose her own laws. In the in the real world, you've got governments, and then even if you're like in charge of a government, you have competing governments, and you have like outside influence. Here, it's Rapture and only Rapture. Like there's no there's no escaping it. You are abandoned. Yeah. Is it is it time for the the DLC? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Let's jump into the time. DLC real quick. We're, <laughs> we'll have we're to go super in. quick, but <laughs> um, I'll open because I think this is going to be Palazzo's section for sure. So for those of you who might not know, the DLC Minerva's Den is a it's a pretty good DLC. You take con- you take control of a different big daddy, Benetatas. You want to explain it? Yeah. So you're headed to. They made a, a super central computer, I guess, because they're so advanced without the science being constrained with all the no laissez-faire um so yeah you're headed to the where the big rapture central computer is and uh there is the his business partner reed the business partner reed wall uh Mm -hmm. there's two there's two guys who help make it cole porter and reed wall and yeah reed wall is still alive and still crazy and keeping you away from there uh he just doesn't trust you big daddy being coming over and yeah, you're discovering. Uh, the computer talks to you all the while. Discover, uh, and you discover. Oh wait! What's spoiler! In Minerva's spoiler dead. warning! Right. <laughs> but in case yeah. you say it, I guess. Yeah. So if you don't want spoilers, get out of here. Okay. Ultimately, you oh. are uh, you are investigating this, and you're hearing Cole Porter's logs, and lo- and Porter's like guiding you along the way, the way that Atlas and Sinclair do. Yeah. Um, and you hear about how he was trying to replicate his wife's personality the whole time. And that's like the sad thread that you hear of him developing the relationship with his computer. And then spoiler alert at the end, you find out that you are Porter. You are Cole, Charles Milton Porter. Yeah. Cole, Cole Porter. Charles Milton. No, Charles. Cole Porter is the the singer. Sorry. Yeah. Um, (laughs) um, the yeah, the computer needed to leave Rapture and wanted you, the wanted to, uh, trying to get you and the computer to escape. And the only way for it for you to trust it apparently would be your own soothing voice. So this computer that has been able to pass the Turing test uh, sounds like a. Real, I love the bits the with AI Alan Turing sounds that like they a real, threw in there, like the audio logs that reference Alan Turing. Yeah, and all that. yeah. Sorry, continue. Yeah. So they made yeah the computer took on your own voice and personality, uh, Charles' voice and personality uh, to to guide you. Mm-hmm. to escape rapture and uh tenenbaum also was here helping you i guess she's the one who uh brought you your, your free will back because normally big daddies aren't allowed to think for themselves yeah. and do what they want you know 
Yeah. Um, and so that's it. It's a it's a really compelling story, and it's a lot of kind of the same gameplay from two. It's just like on a fast track to give you like more stuff as quick as it can, and it introduces a few new elements. Like a there's a new gun that can shoot lasers or heat beams and that sort of thing. New new type of big daddy. New type of big daddy and a new plasmid as well. Uh, that's this like gravity vortex type thing. Uh, my ultimate thoughts on it are just that I think it's really good. It's solid. I think it's an interesting story. For me, it was just a little predictable. I saw, I, I put oh. a lot of the threads together ahead of time. And the gameplay, I enjoyed so much my build in 2 that then like not knowing how to handle the DLC, starting out like bare bones again and being like, I don't know what way I want to go. And I tried experimenting with different things. I had fun in ways that I didn't in 2 since I had a perk that disabled all my weapons in 2. And so like I had some fun, but it just, it wasn't uh as stellar as I guess it was hyped up to be for me, but I still thought it was solid. So I'll say it. This is my favorite Bioshock thing that I've played. Like above all, even I, I think I might've preferred it better than the first game, even though it was like a short experience. Um, I think it combines the gameplay from Bioshock two, which I, th- I think is my favorite gameplay and some of the story elements from Bioshock one and the way they present the story to you. Um, the new weapons, the new plasmids, like the gravity plasmid and the laser weapon are really nice additions. Um, it, the story, I didn't think it was predictable at all. It totally surprised me in the end. The, the twist that you're Porter and like, you're guiding yourself through the whole thing the whole time. And the, the bits of the audio diaries that you pick up about him and his wife, I thought were really cool. Oh, I love only for it to. It, it, it was a sad story, too, at the end. His final monologue where he's talking about his wife. Yeah. It made me tear up. It got me. Yeah. That, I don't know really the name good. of that voice actor, but he's he's incredible. Uh, Porter's voice actor. Yeah, he, he killed it. Yeah. And I said that from like the beginning. I was like, oh, I like his voice. And as it went on, I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. This guy's, this guy's yeah. a beast. And the relationship between him and the antagonist of that game. Um, Reed Wall. Wall. Reed. Yeah. It, that relationship was really neat and they kind of drop hints too kind of like in the first game where the game sort of tells you that atlas is the bad guy but sort of doesn't tell you this game also hints at the fact that you are porter but you don't know that until a second playthrough and it's like oh they it wasn't obvious but you could also piece it together which i guess john I, you probably did yeah um <laughs> since you guessed the ending but it totally got me and I loved it. I loved the characters. The gameplay was even more refined from Bioshock 2, and I, I enjoyed it immensely. His his name is Carl Lumley. Carl Lumley. Okay, cool. He's good. Yeah. I don't know. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> I think those twists, like you being that person, are just some of my, my favorite kinds of twists. I would say my like my all-time favorite, like no matter how many times I see it, as long as it's done well, I love it, is the twist in Bioshock Infinite, which I won't spoil yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, but that is in any media, any anything. Whenever that's the answer, that's always that becomes one of my favorite things ever, no matter what. And this is not uh, like this is in the vein of those kinds of twists I like. And I think that because it's well set up and because it's a shorter story, I just I was able to connect the dots a little quicker than the game wanted me to. But it's not bad. It's it's not it's not to the game's detriment at all. It doesn't pick up until the end of it which might detract from my final rankings if we do those of each Bioshock game, uh, because the first half of Minerva's Den is more of the same. Mm-hmm. Um, did we say Minerva's Den was the name of the DLC? I believe it so, is. Yes. It yeah. is. Okay, cool. Well, um, th- I guess my final thought on it too is um, the music also ramped up a lot in the DLC. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but the music, when you get to Porter's office, just it becomes so quiet and solemn and that got to me as well i i just really i enjoyed all of it i loved it yeah. i enjoyed yeah. some of the puzzle solving like for the vaults and stuff in in the dlc i thought those were fun uh and i thought they added to the overarching story as well one of the puzzles like a splicer was stuck in the water and completing a current yeah. of electricity that you had to, yeah. i used telekinesis I and i just funny. i pulled the glasses off the splicer's face and then threw them back <laughs> at the splicer thought that was funny. Uh, I like uh, some of the world building in this DLC, yeah. I think, the most. Um, yeah. They did. They talk about they tried to do robotic little sisters mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. that didn't work out. And they were very, very creepy. 
And there's one audio di- diary that sticks with me uh, that's by Porter. Yeah. And it's it's something like um, people ask me, like, why don't you, you know, get ahead, splice white? He's like, I don't need to splice white. I yeah. came down here. It reminds you people came down here for a rapture to get away from that kind of stuff. Exactly. And then you remember, oh, yeah, this is the 60s. So, yeah, people are going to be. Yeah. A little, yeah. So it's some more world building, and yeah, I really liked that. Is and it I, uncommon to love it as much as I did? No, it, it's beloved. Like, and I think that maybe killed it for me a little bit because I was expecting. I I heard from a lot of people that it's one of the best DLCs in gaming ever, and maybe it is. But I was I don't know what I was expecting, but I guess I was just expecting more. Yeah, but it's I had zero solid. expectations. So I was you told me you started because people hyped it up so much. Yeah, yeah, it, that's exactly what I mean. Like, I think it's just, it was well, overhyped like, for me. Like, John, you started gaming late, right? Yeah. Because DLCs are normally, have been for a while, like, they're usually pretty crap, and they don't really add anything. So this was, I like, one of those, for, besides Fallout that I can think of. This one, of one of the of first DLCs. ones that was mm-hmm. actually adding something. Yeah. 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 I, I still think it was good. I did. I absolutely did not dislike it. I just wasn't blown away. My, my like, a final opinion of it is just that, it's a nice add-on to the base game. And especially, like, if you played the game and you're like, oh, man, I want more Bioshock 2. I don't know if I want to do, like, a full playthrough again. This is a lovely experience to go through. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, 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 oh. I'm formally submitting for my doctorate uh, with Uh-oh. my own undocumented <laughs> oh, <yeah>. discovery. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's what it was. I forgot to glitch. Uh, Dr. Benetatos and I, uh, I, I was on a field expedition and I discovered something and I submitted to uh, my higher authorities to conduct some research and we did some testing and uh, we think we've found some really interesting results that have been undocumented and unduplicated. So uh, I'll let uh, Dr. Benetatos explain, but this is yeah. my, my formal submission for my doctorate of, of science in Bioshock. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> for very nerdy people, uh, I if I did not see it in stream in front of me, I wouldn't believe you. I just think like, oh, you just weren't paying attention. But uh, in it, this is Dionysus Park in the Triton Theater, uh, backstage during John's playthrough, that Vita Chamber was deactivated, and he was even given the option to activate it in the game. Uh, for everyone else, I've watched, and for me too, whenever I saw that Vita Chamber went to it, it was already activated. And I can't find any other playthroughs or any mention at all for why this could possibly be deactivated. I know that a lot of people on their playthrough, they played with Vita Chambers already deactivated because they wanted the stupid big brass balls achievement. <laughs> so so a lot of people played through this game not even thinking about it. But if anyone knows why... Maybe if this could possibly be narrative reasons, if it's just a glitch, fine, but it's not documented, so we just need it documented, yeah. I think, is the main thing. Because if so it happened in Bioshock it. 1, it would make sense because that mechanic exists in it. But in this one, right, there's no right. reason for that mechanic to have even been programmed into it. So it's it's interesting. And why, why in a theater? Yeah. I, there's got to be a joke or something about acting, <laughs> dying for your art or something. Like, I... You heard it's it here first, me. folks. Whimsic Productions is breaking ground on scientific discoveries. Or breaking the game. <laughs> <laughs> they are one and the same. <laughs> Our research knows no bounds. Oh, I have one little funny thing. Go for it. Just one little sure. little little thing that I thought was quite funny. Um, when you get the fire plasmid, mm-hmm. it says for ages 12 and up. There's an ages yes, 12 I and up that. warning on it. <laughs> And I think that's hilarious. I love I don't all know the why displays. <laughs> displays like that, stuff like the amusement park. I, this game is just fun. Like, that's my overall... Yeah. It, this game is just full of fun stuff. And I enjoyed that. Um, do we feel like we're ready to vote? Yeah. Yes, so. sir. You know, the 12 and up ad for the incinerate, I think that speaks for the whole game. It's probably for 12 and up. <laughs> oh, no. It's not very, it's not very scary. <laughs> it's very fun though. yeah you, no you're not wrong there i i was not scared at all in this game but okay yeah i guess uh i think we've we've had, we have, we've, we've had a good chat especially considering that yeah a lot of this just comes almost straight from bioshock one and it's just these alterations so in the case of bioshock 2 how do we vote i don't think it is any surprise that i think it is an absolute must buy 
Uh, so far, this is possibly my favorite Bioshock game. Wow. Okay. I guess, yeah, you should buy this because it's still Bioshock and it is a lot fun a lot of fun the story is still very good despite does just because it's the worst bioshock does not mean that it's not bad it's still very very good like a 9 out of 10 yes you should buy this game just buy it already i mean what are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you listening to us for you could have played the opening section of the game but no. yeah what is wrong with you <laughs> that opening is very yeah grips you right away it's good yeah, I'm going to say buy it, but I don't think that's... I don't think any of this is a surprise, guys. <laughs> no. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you liked the gameplay of Bioshock 1, this is more of that, possibly with even better refinements. So, drill daddy, drill. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> buy it just to be a drill daddy. Just to be yeah. a daddy. Be this is a buy. Daddy. Buy for the daddies. I'm going to get a drill daddy tattoo. Oh no! <laughs> Maybe just get a drill instead. Maybe just get a drill. <laughs> just get a drill. <laughs> All right. In the so- case of Bioshock Two Daddy Simulator, you should buy this game. <laughs> that is a second unanimous vote. I Day two of Bioshock Week. Wow. Go yeah. get these games, people. But hey, hey, you don't know how we feel about Bioshock Infinite, so make sure you listen on Friday and. I, look, all I'm going to say is, yeah, we love Bioshock, but Bioshock Infinite is a very different game from the two of them. Yes. Oh, very yeah. different. Yes. That's true. Ah. Um, but yeah, that said, this game, we've been having so much fun. What a great idea this was to play all these Bioshock games. I hope you guys have been having fun with us. We've been streaming them. We're still streaming them. Uh, well, the day this releases, I will probably be doing the last Bioshock stream. Uh, so come join us as we cry away bioshock um Cry away. until next time apparently there's a new one coming out maybe soon really what i think last year is this they your announced... discovery <laughs> <laughs> i i yeah actually today I, I looked up like when will the next one be coming and i think they dropped a hint in 2019 that there could be one coming for next gen consoles oh, but boy. there's like barely anything confirmed nick you might know more than me but they, yeah I've heard it's coming it... It's a smaller group, though, and that it would be PC only. Oh, interesting. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't know. Worry about it right now. Yeah. I want a more concrete uh, reveal. Yeah, of course, of course. Right. Well, that said, thank you all so much for listening. Thank you. We'll talk at you next week. Goodbye. Yes, I'm good. Oh. <laughs> Tell your daddies you love them. Go tell your daddy. Oh. Yeah, go. <laughs> Mr. Bubble. Call your dad, Mr. Start. Daddies are the physical and metaphysical kind. I'm, get, I'm getting a drill daddy tattoo and I'm changing my last name to Bubble.